From Abuja, the nation's capital, this is Matters Arising coming to you live from the studio of Captain Television. Matters Arising is the flagship talk show of Captain TV that features in depth discussions and analysis of topical and trending national and international issues by a team of seasoned broadcast journalists. My name is Evelyn Dan Epele saying thank you for joining us. I am John Okoro. Welcome to the program. Okay, to Kwanobago here. Good to have you there. <laughs> All these lofty smiles. Um, yeah. Did you get your 250,000 uh, <laughs> uh, wage already? Hmm. I think uh, at least we were hopeful yesterday <laughs> that uh, something positive mm -hmm. would come out of uh, the meeting that the president called, you know, uh, to meet the labor leaders. Yeah. And it, it Mr. Kichuku, how are you feeling? Are you excited? <laughs> I am excited. No, uh, it's not done yet. <laughs> it's too <laughs> inconclusive. He's having trust issues. <laughs> so we're waiting. <laughs> we, we definitely welcome you to today's show, which promises to be engaging, incisive, and interactive. You can also be a part of the conversation by calling our phone number, which will be displayed on your screen as the show progresses. Now, before I introduce our topic of discussion, let's quickly join Sifon Umo for a quick roundup of events and happenings in the polity. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has welcomed the decision of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, affirming the spirit, intent and purpose of the Constitution on the statutory rights of local government. In a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngilali, the president noted that one of the fundamental challenges to the nation's advancement over the years has been ineffective local government administration, as governance at that level is nearly absent. Tinubu further stated that by virtue of the judgment, the Nigerian people, especially the poor, will be able to hold their local leaders to account adding that what is sent to local government accounts will be known and services must now be provided without excuses. The meeting between President Bola Tinubu and organized labor on minimum wage has been adjourned until next week to allow for wider consultation with all stakeholders. Speaking to State House correspondents after the meeting, NLC President Joe Ajiro said that there were no negotiations at the meeting, rather it was a discussion on the current economic realities in the country. Ajero added that the amount of 250,000 naira demanded by labor as the new minimum wage still stands until the negotiations are over. Also speaking to newsmen after the meeting, the Minister of State for Labour and Employment in Kiruka Onye Jocha said the meeting was fruitful and that very soon everything will be resolved. The House of Representatives has waded into the face-off between the Police Services Commission PSC and the Inspector General of Police over recruitment into the Nigeria Police Force. This followed the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance by Honorable Mitema Obodo of the PDP in Bayosa State during plenary in Abuja. Obodo in presenting the motion stated that the lingering dispute between the PSC and the IGP resulted in an impasse and had regrettably halted the ongoing recruitment process for almost 10 months. The lawmaker noted that the shortage of police personnel had reduced police presence in communities, thereby leading to a surge in crime rates as criminals took advantage of the situation. Adopting the motion, the House urged its committees on police to investigate the root cause of the lingering dispute between the PSC and the IGP and report to it with recommendations within four weeks. Governor Ahmed Aliyu of Sokoto State has signed the Sokoto Local Government and Chieftaincy Law, which stripped the Sultanate of the power to appoint district and village heads in the state. Speaking after signing six executive bills recently passed by the State House of Assembly, Aliyu explained that the amendments were aimed at removing ambiguities and inconsistencies within the nation's constitution. He said the amended laws in the state were not intended to target any individual or group, but rather to promote good governance, adding that Sokoto, like other states, has amended various laws under previous administrations to foster peace and development. 
That is all on the News Roundup. I am Sifon Omo. Now, welcome back and thanks to Sifon for bringing us up to speed with news making headlines. And now the long struggle towards local government, political and financial autonomy has finally come to an end as the Supreme Court of Nigeria declared on Thursday that it was unconstitutional for state governors to hold funds allocated to local government administration. The Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fabemi, SAN, had in May 2024 filed a lawsuit on behalf of the federal government seeking to grant full autonomy and direct funding to all 774 local government councils in the country. High points of the judgments include that the power of the government is portioned into three arms of government, the federal, the state, and the local government, that the 774 local government councils in the country should manage their funds themselves, that a state government has no power to appoint a caretaker committee, and that a local government council is only recognizable with a democratically elected government. Now that this matter has been put to rest, are we going to see a rejuvenated local government system in the country, or have we just empowered another set of public officers to continue on the usual path of financial misappropriation? Hmm, Mr. Kichiku, I want to keep my thoughts to myself right now. <laughs> I want to keep my immediate thoughts to myself, but I want to hear what I want to hear what's on your mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a beautiful thing. It's really mm -hmm. a beautiful thing that the local government will um, have what belongs to them. Uh, before now, we have known and seen that state governors were doing whatever they liked with the monies that belonged to these local government authorities. And um, they, they, they didn't bother whatever, whatever anyone would say. In actual fact, in some places, you will never have any election for all the years the governor will be there because the governor will want to pocket everything yeah. and dole out whatever he likes, anyhow he likes, to the people. Mm. So this is liberation. This is liberation, as well liberation. as I know, for local government authorities. <laughs> do, do you agree that this is liberation? Well, I think uh, the federal government under Tenebu was actually smart enough uh, to take this particular matter to the Supreme Court, uh, which is uh, a court of policy and also a constitutional court where you That's have right. issues uh, with the law, you had the only way you can get the real interpretation is at the Supreme Court. And that's exactly what government did, and this is where we are now. And if you, if you, you know, recall, over the years, uh, there had been attempts through the National Assembly to actually uh, get this local government financial and political uh, autonomy as a law in the country, but it mm -hmm. never saw the light of the fact. Uh, the last attempt at um, constitutional amendment, which was in 2022 into 2023, in fact, the local government political and financial autonomy you know, was actually one of the items that the National Assembly approved and were sent to the states. I know for any item to become law, it must be approved by a two-third of uh, the assemblies across the 36 states. However, the assemblies rejected that particular item and they gave reasons. Reason being that uh, the state governors actually sent a bill to be part of the constitutional amendment, which was the state police bill, that the National Assembly rejected that bill. And as a quid pro quo, do me, I do you kind of thing, they refused and they made sure that the assemblies in their states refused to approve of the local government autonomy item under the constitutional amendment, the very last one. And so now that the, the federal government has seen that the only way yeah. they can get it is to take this matter, because what the Supreme Court has simply done is simply to interpret the law. Mm. The, the Supreme Court has not, has not actually created any law. Mm -hmm. They just interpreted the law as it is, section 7 of the constitution and section 162. Everyone, when this topic is brought up anywhere that I have discussed this um, since the news broke, has focused more on the people, the administrators, mm -hmm. which is that it's it, it's pretty much um what I call it like a wolf in sheep clothing type mm -hmm. engagement, where yeah. someone is changing their mm -hmm. cloak mm -hmm. and putting on a new cloak mm -hmm. and going into a new office where it's the same 
crop of politicians and the same um, sets of people. And we're discussing this along the lines of, say, financial autonomy, uh, um, administrative power, and how that is going to be brokered under this new um, arrangement. Just like we keep saying repeatedly on matters arising um, and in terms of empowering our viewers, there has been this argument over time that what we really need is accountability frameworks. Um, I'm personally happy about the, the restructuring or the reshuffling, partly because I feel like we can't get new results or we can't get results if we continue in the old trend. So the change or the reshuffling in any way or any sense will trigger or cause you know the new arrangements would present new sets of results um but with the conversation about having the same sets of people um who were in the old arrangements and of course have shown themselves um to to not be trustworthy in this new arrangement i think for me what should follow and what would make me even happier um beyond this restructuring is a very clear set of um accountability frameworks that is programmed and implemented at the local government level to ensure that that same level of financial misappropriation does not sort of like repeat itself. And you know, beyond the local government, I think that generally we need a lot more accountability in the country. We need a lot more open governance. Um, but generally, I think I'm sort of pleased. I don't want to use the word happy because we, we're not at the point where we're seeing results. I'm sort of pleased with. Um, with the move but you know bef before we go further on this i just want us to um, move to the streets and listen to what our viewers and contributors have to say in the short box pop i will commend the president for that at least it has it have i think decentralized the power of the governors at least the, the local government chairman will be able to have the power of their own we have the mind of their own to do what they want to do and power will be able to go to the the roots the masses you get it. so the supreme court we say kudos to the supreme court judgments it was a very wonderful decision this is what we have been clamoring for for a long time that uh, the democracy should go to the grassroots the our governors have not allowed democracy to go to the grassroots for a very long time but with this i think that will reduce insecurity in our local council area the young people is like giving power to the young people the young people will be able to go to their local government area. They will be relevant. They know that there is hope for them to become governor tomorrow. When they become chairman of the local government, they become councillors of the local government. They know that they are not being shortchanged. They are not being handpicked by the governors. So there is hope for the young people. The best decision taken by any government so far is that particular decision. Nobody expects that such will happen because of the the way the, the, our governors arrogated power to themselves. But today, the Supreme Court some more courage and pass it. And today we are all happy. Democracy is progressing. We are moving because these governors have already stag stagnated or starved the local government administration in Nigeria. All the past reforms that uh, uh, has been done on local government uh, this uh, uh, lack of autonomy has undermined it, but now we will now start seeing local government working in their own local government, sanitizing their environment. Our discussion. And now welcome back. It's very um, synonymous to the conversation that we're having. You heard um, what people are seeing on the streets. And I was just saying before we went to listen to that, um, that accountability mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. should be our watchword from here on out. But even beyond that to me is that personal reflection that we keep calling for, um, which is that every single Nigerian, each one of us, we really need to get to this point where we have come into the realization that it is very very important that this country moves forward if we continue on this current trajectory that we're in where there's no accountability where there's wasting public ex expenditure where there's no sense of urgency to the issues um combined with all of the exogenous factors that contribute to you know further pushing people into poverty and hardships and suffering i don't foresee a bright future at all the local government is supposed to be the government that is closest to the masses. 
And so that is what it should be at a time like this. Mm. Um, yes, accountability, I agree with you. But let me say that before now, the local government had been the worst of the three tiers of government oh, wow. when it comes to accountability. Where, I mean, the man would say, I didn't receive it. And there's nothing else you can do because he would say, go and ask the governor. He didn't give me. And it would be like that. And <laughs> there are many things about the local government that were not okay. I pray and hope that from now on, there will be a, a change, an effective change. But don't you, think, don't you to, think that yeah, now I, that they've empowered them in this way, uh, that this change you're referring to, don't you think it's going to actually come? Because I feel like now, and maybe because it's called local government, mm -hmm. there's some kind of local mm -hmm. type behavior, politics that take place at that level where it's like we don't have quality seasoned politicians and holding you know the, the position of local governments um, most of the people that you have today that have become governors and um, senators and members of house of reps have been in the local assembly right the truth is that that as i said is the one that is nearest to the people so in actual fact the best of uh, governance should be seen mm -hmm. and understood and felt from that side so whoever feels as a local government uh, uh, chairman or whoever feels as uh, as uh, what do you call them now the the uh, assembly in the local government whoever that feels that that uh, at that level should not even be thinking of going further mm. to talk about state or federal state assembly or what do you call it now the national assembly but but the fact is that our people have always been uh, Disinterested, disinterested right. in what has to do with governance, which is wrong. We should wake up, and in actual fact, waking up should be begin most of all from the local government, because there you are seeing the man; he's seeing you on a daily basis. It's not like when it's so difficult for you to see the president. I mean, you may never meet the president for the four years the president will be your president, but you can't say that you will not see your local government chairman in your own local government. He would always be there, and. Um, if they don't look to see what those people in that authority will be doing, then it will, it, it, this one will be their first that's, Waterloo, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Mm -hmm. So they need to wake up and, because when you say accountability, it's what are you doing to check the man that is there? Right. There is this checks and balances that we need to put in place to ensure that it is happening the the street the street where i live in i, I will find out uh, who is supposed to work on that street is the local government and i'll check make to make sure that that road has been done by the local government i'll make my own uh, requests and send it to ensure that it happens you will do you will do that way we'll get them to work the primary schools are under them too most of the time because people don't seem to know that Mm. They are under them. And you make sure that they do the right thing. This thing you're saying that there are schools where there are no, no chairs for children, that they are sitting on the, uh, on the ground to, to learn in this century. Oh my I God. think um, it's all about business. accountability, like uh, uh, Evelyn said earlier. Uh, in my opener, I said that what the Supreme Court just did was to interpret the law. Uh, everything that the Supreme Court actually declared yesterday, all everything you see in that declaration can be f found in the Constitution. Everything. But, you know, it was the way the governors interpreted the law. Yeah, because mainly there were two things that were at stake here. One was the funds accruing to local government. Because if you look at the, the federation account allocation, mm -hmm. the federal government gets 52%. Right. The state governments get 26 percent why the local governments get 20 percent now the 26 percent of the states and that of the local government 20 percent are paid into a joint account established by the constitution in section 162 now despite everything that the law says the state government now had to interpret that section for themselves and then but don't you think that that in itself reveals what the, the, the exactly that, that is, is why why should an individual why should any single individual 
misinterpret the law. That is why and it, even that, the that law is, and the system that is what is how is 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 exactly. allowing that, they are the point that, that is why to that is why the federal government now had to go to the Supreme Court, yeah. which is a policy court and also a constitutional court. Even though being the highest appeal court in the country, it is also a policy court and a constitutional court. And and the court. I'm asking this question yeah, in yeah. the direction of, you just talked about how these policy courts, mm -hmm. and this is an interpretation of the constitution. Yes. But the constitution that they are reinterpreting is the same one that the, the, at the state level is being plotted. The, 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 the Supreme Court, about that. The, the Supreme Court being the final arbiter, has put this to rest by giving consequential orders. Some of the things you read out there uh, in, the start, in the newspapers and everything, they are consequential orders. They are consequential orders. Anyway, I'm um, sorry to interject. Okay. I want to say that our phone lines are open and our viewers can be a part of the conversation by calling our phone number 080-299-38365, which is now displayed on your screen. Please turn down the volumes of your TV sets when calling um, us to give your contribution. Um, the reason I am bringing this up and I'm saying this to you is because I feel like this is like a cycle. We, we said this um, and when, when you were giving your uh, uh, response. But let me quickly take this call. Hello, good evening. Captain TV Matters Arising. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thanks for joining the show. What's your name and where are you calling from? Thank you very much. My name is Godwin and I'm calling from Aquai State. Thank you for joining the show. Can we have your contribution in a few minutes? Okay, I think I am giving a, a kudos to Mr. President for uh, such a monument, monumental step taking so far to make sure that local governments uh, have the autonomy. But my question now is, what will be the state of some some local governments uh, across some states that are yet to have democratically elected chairmen? Okay, I'm asking that in respect to what will be the effect in terms of allocation. How are they going to cope depending on the time frame they will do their election, please? Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for joining the program. Thank you so much. That's a very good question. I think I, asked, um, uh, sorry, we have another okay. caller on the line. Hello, good evening. Carson TV Matters arising. Hello? Hello, good evening. Captain TV Matters Arising. We lost that caller. I think he asked a very beautiful and yes. um, brilliant yeah. question in terms of how this would um, ultimately impact elections. Do you, do you want to chime yeah, in? Well, well, he, he, he asked a direct question because in the country now, there are many states that mm -hmm. have not conducted local government elections in so many years. And they have been running the local governments by the means of caretaker committees and by the instrumentality of the declaration of the Supreme Court yesterday which took effect from when it was pronounced yesterday any local government any state as we speak today that doesn't have a democratically elected local government system will not have their allocation given to them mm. it's as simple as that so basically, we have to prepare for local government elections. Yes. Mr. Kichuku, I like the force <laughs> of your... The force, I like how invested you are in this. Do you want to give us some practical yeah. insights as to um, what is going on even in your own local government? What, what is this arrangement like? Well, uh, I, I, I really... I was thinking about what he just said. Mm -hmm. Because it, there, is, there is going to be some pain and some problem with this until it is... Um, made clear the more because right. what i'm saying it is let's look at one that everybody knows now that in river state that there are uh, uh, what do you call them now Ket so okay, you can you come back to my state no, 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 no. about your own state, about <laughs> you that. Should leave my state no, alone. there are people i think people are, that are elected are still there right now yeah but what i'm saying like in this place now we have mm -hmm. care committees uh and then even the ones that their tenure has expired are still struggling that they will remain in office so some people may decide to come back now to say, if you want this state to be getting money for local governments, right. we are the ones that will be there. Not minding that their tenures have uh, expired, because the new ones are yet to come. So I'm thinking, it's a dicey thing for people in such a place. Right. Because what so, would they Sorry do? to interject. Yes, we have yes, a caller. Mm. Um, good evening. Captain TV matters arising. 
Francis. Good evening, Francis. Thanks for joining the show. Can we have your contribution in a minute? Yeah. I look at that. What of some students are not going to look at local recommendation for many years now? Hmm. Okay. How, will the, how will the government do that issue? Thanks for your question. Thanks for your contribution and calling the show. Thank you. So he's pretty much asking um, um, the yes. same question that we asked. And I think yeah. this creates room. And, and that's the thing. I feel like one of the things we get wrong in the country, and I see this happen whenever there's a policy enactment. And this still brings me back to the conversation we had um, the last time that I anchored the program about how there's a big failure of our policy communication. Some of these questions that people are asking, I believe, should have been presented to the public in a very thorough brief about what the impacts and the consequences and some of the expectations should be so that people are not sort of confused. And I feel like this is, I see you nodding your head like this, but <laughs> I, I want to insist because when people don't understand and when people are confused, the only thing they do is to speculate and come up with things that make sense to them. And that's why you have people just put on a suit and show up and say, hey guys, I'm the local government chairman, mm -hmm. right? Because nobody is checking for these things. There is no proper communication as to what the next steps are. Um, just, we, uh, just as John said, that um, it was supposed to take effect from yesterday. Uh, that's right. what I was saying. Now, if it takes effect from yesterday, what would these people do? That's what this woman has okay. Okay. So we okay. need more time. Okay. Sorry, I have a I call of on time. time. I would time. get your okay. thoughts yeah. in a yeah. minute. All right, yeah. but, but go ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, like I said, you know, the pronouncements of the Supreme Court you know, are clear. Are mm. Crystal clear as water. Very clean water. There's nothing that is ambiguous. There's a straightforward thing. Mm. If you are running a local government system today with a CTC, that is yeah, uh, a critical committee. committee, then forget about your allocation. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but what happens next? What yeah, happens next is that you have to go and do what the law says to go and conduct an election. election. So and basically, you are now stressed it, and it, it, whatever it, it takes, whatever it takes, it, it is no it, more. You can't just do it overnight. It, yes. is, it is not. It is not the problem of the Supreme Court anymore. It has pronounced its law, and, and Supreme Court is a final arbiter. There's no. You can't even appeal it. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. Captain <laughs> TV Max is arising. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Can you please turn down the volume of your TV set? This is Adamu Show Mohammed. Good evening, Mr. Adamu. Can you please turn down the volume of your TV set and let's have your contribution in one minute? Yes, Thank you very much. Please, I want to confirm this issue concerning this issue. The local government autonomy has come to stay. Now, this local government that have caretakers in their peace that have no elected chairman. What is the fate of civil servants of that those local governments? Thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Adam. This affected July because it's effect from in July. So what is the uh, fate of those civil servants in those local governments? How are they going to be paid their salaries? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, good evening. Captain TV Matters Arising. Good evening. Can you please turn down the volume of your TV set? Okay, I'm very far from my TV set now. Thank you. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Bishop from Lagos. Thank you, Bishop. Can we have your contribution in one minute? All right. Um, we thank God for the judgment of the Supreme Court. In as much as matter has been put to rest, um, the battle is far from over because the governors are used to the 46 percent. As it is now, even though the judgment has been done, permit me to say this the local government elections are going to be submitted by the governors to make sure they don't have them elected in order for them to do that with this form that is coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to take this one caller and I'll get your thoughts. Before we hello, good evening. Captain TV, Matt is arising. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Gabriel, calling from Koji State. Nice to have you join us on the show, Mr. Gabriel. Can we have your contribution in one minute? Thank you very much. Uh, I only I want to appreciate the president for the for the civil government autonomy. Mm. But my concern now is 
there are some states that have other uh, that have uh, develop uh, create that create other local government by themselves. Mm. Mm. Now, what you did their fit? If, for example, the, local, the constitution recognized twenty local government for a state, and the state now gave another ten. So now, if they are going to, to come down to that state, what is the fate of the remaining thing? Well, thank you so much for your question and contribution. We appreciate you. Um, I like that everyone is asking this question, and maybe this should be an opportunity to um, sort of notch the Supreme Court. Does the Supreme Court need a help desk where people call and, and ask questions? Yeah, these things are even easily explained. We've had if this law is very clear mm. section 7 of the night thing the law is very clear but i don't agree the law is very clear hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on first of all the law recognizes 774 local governments okay. i'm trying to speak to the last question yes anyone who goes around to create something that is outside the 774 constitutionally recognized local governments in the country, the person is on his own. It happened in around 99, the mm -hmm. current president was the governor of Lagos State. He created what they call the local uh, council development areas, LCDAs. Mm -hmm. And what happened? The go uh, uh, president uh, of Basanjo withheld the allocations to Lagos State. And, and throughout Basanjo's time, Lagos State didn't get the local government allocation until the other came and then the matter was reversed. So once you do anything that is outside the law, you have to bear the consequences. It is 774. That's what the law recognizes. So if you do anything outside that, then it means you have to create an extra fund to fund that. And the state can do it if they have, if they want to. Yes, they can do it. That was what happened in Enugu State, of course, under Chimaroke. There were LCDAs too that were created, though they are no longer there right now. Uh -huh. But then they created money to help. Uh, develop those areas. Mm. It, it, it's good to develop your, your your state, really. But the fact is, uh, we want to do the development within the law. Don't do it outside the law. Whatever right. happens, oh, there's a caller. Yes, we have a caller, but we lost that call. Oh. I think this particular individual might be having trouble. Mm. The number to call is zero eight zero two nine nine three eight three six five now displayed on your screen. Hello, good evening. Captain TV Matters Arising. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? My, my name is Idris Mohamed from Central Hi, Mr. Idris. Can you have your contribution in one minute? Thank you. Mine is a question. Right. I want to ask a question, please. Go ahead. Uh, I want to declare that the state of independent National Electoral Commission, that is the National Alliance, are they, are they, from, are they the ones from the elected or the, the, the state of Alliance? Thank uh, you so much. Keep watching the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for your question. That's a good question. Hello, good evening. Captain TV Matters Arising. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for joining the show. What's your name and where are you calling from? I am. I am. My name is Elema Obona. I am calling from the country. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Obona. Can we have your contribution in one minute? Yes. The decision of the Supreme Court is free. We all in the South is not it. At least, let the local government have the independence of their own. The next move. To the IMF, federal uh, government, uh, state and for conducting local government elections. Let them move ahead and hold it so that let the best good be presented. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you joining the show. Hello, good evening. Casting TV matters arising. This particular caller has had trouble speaking. It just drops off from the call. Or um, mm. I like these contributions that are coming because it's providing this fresh perspective as to what this arrangement entails. I see like people, there's a consensus around the fact that this is a good decision, mm. right? Um, and I see that people are feeling like this autonomous um, phase mm. that the local governments have would sort of allow 
the people in the local governments have direct, not just direct access to their local government chairman, but now the local government chairman cannot even deny or pretend that they are not getting monies because yes. now it's out in the open. Yes, and like Mr. Kotiko has said, Koro, Koro, we yes. can see and hear, um, you know, by the law um, that they now have autonomy and they are the ones that are in charge. So no more would your local government chairman say to you that, oh, we never hear from governor mm. or any of all those um, uh, sly remarks that they make yes. when they're being asked or held accountable. Mm. And like I'm saying, what needs to follow? Because you see, people pretty much have the same um, string of questions, which is states that have um, caretaker committees, what would be their fate? So we need more policy communications from the government. I believe we need to hear from the government. At least we've heard um, some suggestions here. We need to hear from INEC what would be the framework and the pathway for organizing um, um, elections to fill those um, spaces. It is not INEC okay. that will do that. It is the CIEC, that is the State Independent Electoral Commission, uh, Commission in each state that will still do that. So each state will determine their own and fix their dates. The earlier, the better, so that it will, they, they will succeed in doing this. That's one thing. It has to be done. It has to be done, just as John said. It has to be done, and it has to be quickly done. Yes. Uh, the, one of the uh, callers said okay. something, please. And he said that... Um, uh, that the state governors will be enjoying 46 <laughs> percent that's not right that's not, it's not correct that's the essence of uh, exactly the essence it's of uh, this uh, uh, uh you know this uh, clear interpretation of the law yes. uh, that's the essence of it that mm -hmm. the 20 percent that belong to the local government will mm -hmm. go straight now, on the issue of you know the concept of uh, true federalism yeah. actually you know will not allow for the local governments to be totally divorced from the states mm. it can't happen mm. because we're still talking about the federal state. Mm. However, what we are, what is just being said is simple: that let the law take its course. Mm. Now, what is being said is there's no way you can divorce the local government system from the states because these local governments are actually embedded in the states, mm. so you can't divorce it. So, therefore, the law is very clear on what what should be done. So, I don't think there's any ambiguity there. I it's think there's ambiguity. No, the reason no. he, uh, Mr. Tichuku was saying something and it's a, it's a, it's a paradoxical um, point he raised about how the current president when he was governor um, it's yeah, interesting yeah, that you know, it, oh, yeah, Mr. John sorry for the misappropriation yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. the, when he was governor the same thing that he's tackling now as president he was sort of guilty of you know creating local governments that were not even constitutionally recognized mm. and what that says to me is that at a, a critical mass level nigerians are not clear about the interpretations of the law i think it's don't you think that we need to push for more civic education i in think that yeah, exactly i think in terms every time we have this show I, I call on the national uh, orientation uh, agency exactly. don't you think it's time for exactly but you know at a time like this at a time like this the main owners of getting this in done is actually lies with the state governments okay. as it is, because they are the one, you see the states are independent electoral commissions are actually created by the laws of the state mm -hmm. itself and therefore it's still the state government that will control what happens in terms of local government elections mm -hmm. but so what, I, what all i see that is going to happen here the scenario i'm going to see here is that the states will obey the law based on conducting the elections but what will still happen will happen it is still the main of the governors that will still occupy those seats. We yes, have a caller. We have a caller. Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining the show. <laughs> Captain TV, Matthews Rising. <laughs> good evening. Thanks for joining the show. Captain TV, Matthews Rising. Good evening, madam. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling yeah. from? I'm Joseph Donald, calling from Takum Local Government, Taraba State. Thank you. I think this is really good to see someone calling from the local government. Um, can we have your contribution in one minute? Yeah, it's just a question. In our area here, we have uh, a special development area when former governor Dan Babasun he created. I want to know, now that local government has their own autonomy, how is the development area going to survive? Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Back to where they were or not. Thank you very much for the question. Please keep watching the show. We would address your questions. Thank you. 
it's all right. that. I think right. it's it's just very simple, as you mentioned before. I'm so sorry to interject. Um, okay, it you can go ahead and ask that. We still take care of those ones, uh, mm -hmm. but all we know is, uh, in actual fact, if that is the case, really, is it not better even that the people who are in the National Assembly should talk more about creation of more local government areas mm -hmm. than even talking about creation of states? Well. Uh, okay. Because you, know, if you, you know what I mean. I because understand what it's Looking saying. at it now, all these people that had these their uh, 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 development areas, they had, they had, they meant well. They had good plans for their state. So let them even project that one at a time like this and see if we'll be able to have more of those ones and raise this matter of state creation. Because no matter what is done now, there will still not be any state created. Well, uh, you know, like the, the person that called from Ad uh, Daraba State, you know, anytime a governor goes outside the law to do what, you see, the governor has the power mm. confirmed on him, confirmed on him by the law to do anything that he can to bring about good governance in his state. So if a governor decides to create uh, LCDA, the local council development area, for the purpose of developing the state, there's nothing wrong with it. However, but when it comes to federal allocation, right. they are not going to get allocation to that. So the governor has to find a way from the IGR of the state to take care of those areas. I think that is as, is, is as simple as that. Now we're just going to take a quick breather. Um, when we return from this break, the conversation continues. This is Matters Arising on Captain Television. Don't go away. Say on Captain TV, imagine a beautiful world. We're not just bragging, we know our onions in the world of broadcasting. One of our outlets to express ourselves to the world is our flagship program, Matters Arising. Join veteran broadcaster Ruben Okala and our crack team live. And they give us a high price, and we just say, Nigeria, <laughs> we had it. <laughs> As I said earlier, the lyrics is up mm. talking about the old new national on Captain TV. Star Times Channel 480 and 124, as well as Night Concert Frequency 12518. Symbol rate 29500 every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. live. You can join the conversation by calling this phone number 0802 993 8365. It's dramatic and insightful. Don't miss it. Please join us. And welcome back. Um, this is Captain TV Matters Arising. Before we went on that break, we were having a conversation about the local government autonomy that have um, been given by the Supreme Court, allowing full independence now to the local governments. Mm -hmm. And the arguments have been in favor that this is a good decision. However, um, the critical mass have found it confusing, really, what the next steps will be and i really want us to descend in this conversation by now focusing on next steps uh, what mr uh, kichuko yes, yes. where do you think this is even going from uh, here what I do you think, see i think it's going to lead to something that is quite robust as far as it, po politicking is concerned in the local government areas because now you will see some people who were not prepared to come before because they were not prepared they will not allow any governor to turn them into their their house boys they will come now more honest and more serious people will come up now for for local government elections so definitely we'll have something better now that's what i know uh, i you remember i said uh, at the very beginning of this thing that the local government used to be the the most porous of all of these it's because of all these things now people that have good intentions could come out to say yes i want to be the, the local government chairman of my, of my of my local government because i now know that the good i want to do for my state will work out because I am now the one in charge of the fund. So it's a beautiful I, thing. I think the biggest problem we have in the country when it comes to administration is uh, accountability and probity. These are the two issues. It's not about laws. We have good laws and everything, but it's about accountability because now if we go using rough figures, I can be telling you uh, that uh, every month at least, the least a local government could get direct it's about 300 million naira. I'm just using this as a round figure. It mm -hmm. could be more, depending on which local government mm -hmm. we're talking about here. So you can imagine what 300 million can actually do for a local government that for years 
has been neglected totally with the structures in total dilapidations mm -hmm. with the staff not being paid for years you know and so many other issues but don't so, you think that now that you're even pointing this out don't you think that would create new challenges you know where we're putting huge sums of money in the hands of you know that's, that, that's what i said that's, 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 that's what i talked about the problem and is there how the conversations now about how those monies would be spent Look at you know, the areas are supposed to moving us forward, don't you think? I think so, I believe so. And that is that, that is the bane of our democracy. Mm -hmm. It's about lack of accountability and poverty. That's the issue. I grew up in the local government system from primary school, even up to junior secondary school then. We were in the local government and we had everything. The local government provided everything for what us. What local government is that? That was that was in the east. Oh. I might not go deeply, but I just okay. want to. Uh, that, that, that was in the eastern part of the country. You know, the primary was nice. everything, including the local government funded primary education and made sure that teachers were paid. Mm -hmm. The local government funded agriculture and even gave out agricultural loans. Mm -hmm. The local government took care of so many things. They provided water, they built okay. ancillary roads, yes. connecting the local government the to, to connecting the, the communities within the local government and then linking mm -hmm. to the trunk B road that yes, the state roads. Exactly they did it. They, they sponsored students. They did everything. But somehow along the line, you know, the human factor when our, our institutions began to be weakened by over you know uh, politicizing, then the local governments now became an appendage of yeah. the states there's something that i would like to bring to the fore which is listening to the conversations and I, how i feel like the power stays on the side of you know with on this program we've had um, remarks like will the governors allow this to happen will the people i want to sort of like shift our focus back to what the core tenets of democracy is which is giving power to the people and even reminding people, I feel like because we've been traumatized so long by cycles of bad leadership after bad leadership after bad leadership, I feel like generally the critical mass has lost sense of the fact that power belongs to the people. And if the people come into recognition of the power that they have and even become the accountability cleaners, you know, I don't expect especially in modern day Nigeria mm. that will get like some robust accountability framework that will be handed to us and I'm even scared because we're yeah, handing no, no, accountability no, 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 frameworks no, no, no. to the same people. Rather than start expecting. Don't say you don't expect. Rather start expecting because mm. that's what will happen. Let me tell you something. But, but don't you think the states. accountability can start from the side of the people and then of course, the people, the people, that's why I said, in actual fact, just as you have over, uh, oversight functions by, by in the National, National Assembly, people in the local governments are the ones that have the oversight uh, function of checking what happens there in their local governments. Let me tell you something, that there is good money there is not enough reason for it to be that they won't be able to do what they ought to do. I remember that in my own state, Anambra State, we never knew that there was money in governance. That's why, anyway, our people don't even care about whatever you get. It's your business. They just want to do their thing and go, you know. But someone, someone came into power and made the difference. You know who? Ngige. Yeah. May he live long in life. Chris Ngige came to Anambra State, changed the, the narrative. Everything became different. We never had roads. We never knew what it meant to have good roads until he came in. That was why when Peter B came in, he had no option but to continue on that. Uh, That's the trajectory, yeah. Yes, because if not, everybody will tell him what, what nonsense have we come to do. And since then, Anambra State is now the best of the, has the best of the roads in Ibo land. So yeah. the local government people are, they're all right. You can't be all right. The fact <laughs> is that. You know, we sounding know, like you, yes, you we, guys know, are we, we know we are so much better, far yeah. from where we used to be before. We know what we want to do. What we normally do is we want to talk about good governance in in our state. We want to talk about something. Say we have pre ngige and post ngige. You know that is that's how it is because it's from him that things started changing up to today. We, I mean, if anybody becomes a governor today or tomorrow and he doesn't do right things, they will attack him. Where were you when this man was here? Where were you when this one was here? Why can you come in here and start doing nonsense? You see, this one that is there now, um, Soludo, he has no option but to do well. If not, he will not have peace in the state. Oh my God. That is it. I like that. that. Is accountability. Um, hello, it's good evening. Captain TV, Martin's arriving. Yes, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening. 
Thanks for joining the my show. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Engineer Godwin. I'm calling from AK, Akwaibom State. It's good to have you join us from Akwaibom. Can we have your contribution in one minute? Yes, I want to say to you, I'm very happy that our president has done what is right. And the Senator, uh, Kwebo, uh, former governor of Akwaibo State, Senator Godwin Lekulopadio, they have tried so much. This is now we have a true democracy. Now, uh, the concerning the conversation that we have here, the government autonomy is going to development in the local government. Mm -hmm. so I'm very that as it is now, the local government chairman will sit up to do what they have to do. They Thank are calling out from the government in the state. Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much for your contribution. Hello, good evening. Casting TV matters arising. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You need to turn down the volume of your TV set. I feel some people call and they want to hear themselves as well. Have mm -hmm. a good evening. Capsule TV matters are rising. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Mr. Gabriel. Can we have your contribution in a minute? Thank you very much. The, the, our, one of our guests was saying something the other time. And I want to be clear. He said the governor of the state can take care of the, the, the other local government created. That was when the allocation comes directly to the joint account of the state. Now that the local government will have their uh, allocation direct from the federal, then how can the state now take care of the uh, local government created by the state? The money coming to the state has been reduced. So how would they, is, is it is easy or possible for them now to not take care of, or they are going to close down those areas, those uh, local government areas? Well, thank you so much for your question and contribution. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, I, I, I I'm sorry, I, I just need to take this call out quickly. Good evening. Capsule TV matters are rising. Thank you. This is Adam Show Mohammed from Kogi State. Hi, Mr. Adamu. Can we have your contributions yes. quickly in one minute? Thank you very much. Yeah. I asked this question. You did not give me the answer of the question I asked, I asked you the other time. I said, what is the fee of the civil servants that are working under the local government that are, uh, that are being run by caretakers? As far as, because the Supreme Court said the, it is effects from this July. So yes. what will be the fate of the salary, fate of the what is called, civil servants working in just by a particular local government? Thanks for That's that. Um, we will treat that question. Thanks for calling us. Hi, good evening. Carson TV matters are rising. Hello? Hello, good evening. Carson TV matters are rising. Yeah, good evening. My name is Sean. I'm calling from the government. Please, you have to turn down the volume of your TV set. Say that again. Yeah, tomorrow is on a short day. You have elections tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow is that state. What state is that? What local? What local state? I love that because now we make us to know more things about Nigeria. What we don't know before. I'm not sure I caught that. Um, Captain TV matters arising. Last call. I think this would be my very last caller. Hello, good evening. Hello, good, good evening, madam. Yes, I can hear you. 
Okay, I'm calling from Delta State. It's nice to have you call us from yes, Delta State. Um, you are uh, our final yes, caller for tonight. What's your name? Um, and where are you? Oh, okay. This is uh, Mr. Abraham calling from Delta State. Mr. Abraham, can we have your contributions quickly in one minute? Please. Please, I want you to appeal to the local government to the chairman, the former you need to turn down the volume of your TV set. You need to turn down the volume of your TV set. Did we, did we lose him? Please. Anyway, um, and that's as much calls we can take for tonight. Um, I don't know. I feel like everybody keeps asking the same sets of questions, but mm -hmm. in different ways, mm -hmm. which is why I'm pushing that we need more robust communications in terms of you know our policy communication is very weak and poor and we leave people confused and i feel like when we don't close that gap people start to take decisions you can have someone now wake up tomorrow morning and say they are there to conduct elections and you know so we need those in charge if INEC is not responsible for conducting the election we need that the state and um, electoral offices need to start communicating what their plans are for states that have um, caretaker committees beyond that too i want to see even some level of education um, and civic engagement especially for young people um people who are not very well educated we need people that will be um, providing information and clarity um as to as to what the next steps are but i want to get your final comments what do you think mr Jones? just flow on the same tra trajectory as you have just done i think there's a need for us as a people to really know our rights we need to do so that uh, once you know your rights the leaders will not toy with your rights that's right mr kichiku oh uh, well all said well said we hope that the best will come even as the best crop of people will come in to be the local government chairman and um, councillors. that's my wish and my prayer know your rights we're expecting the best set of people and just like we like calling on weather all the time i think my message is to say both the local government chairman and all the nigerians fear god though if people should fear god um this is how far we can go on our package tonight on matters arising we thank god and we thank our esteemed viewers and our very vibrant callers as well for making the program interactive on behalf of our producer ruben okala and the entire production team that made the program possible i remain yours truly even dan epele good night and see you next time i am john okuro enjoy the rest of your evening okay so go on go here god bless you and as we say on captain tv imagine, imagine a beautiful, beautiful world, world.